really remarkable about the 4800H is that it's delivering even faster performance than a desktop processor. And it's doing it at 45 watts. About a half a year ago, AMD launched the Sun to architecture, which quickly became a huge success on desktop, not only because the number of cores and threads, but also the power efficiency and huge IPC uplift over the first gen and second gen Ryzen. Now, at CES 2020, AMD unveils its first processor model with Sun to architecture for laptops. The two flagships are called the Ryzen 4600H and the 4800H, where they promise to give Intel some serious competition in the mobile field. Now in this video we're going to look at everything you need to know about these processors and if you are a gamer you need to know about this. Hey what is up guys my name is Robin welcome to Arbin Hardware I hope you're doing fine let's talk about AMD Ryzen 4000 for mobile. The new processors are known as codename Renault R and will be the successor for today's Picasso CPUs. Now, in terms of design AMD made some significant updates and unlike desktop where you would find an IO die and shiplets, the 40 and Ryzen for mobile is designed very differently with only a one single chip this time uh, or die if you like where everything is integrated into this chip. On the graphics side the Vega architecture will return which is a bit unfortunate so no Navi this time. Anyway the number of compute units take a step back from 11 units in total to now 8 units in total giving us a total of 512 steam processors and initially I thought what the hell is AMD doing but according to AMD this unit should deliver 59% better performance than older Picasso which is attributed in both optimizations in the Vega architecture and the TSMC 7 nanometer technology which allows for higher clock frequencies than what's been possible in the past. Now, because of the new design and the fact that AMD went away from the shiplet design. This new design does not require the same need for massive L3 cache to compensate the latencies against the IO die, again in comparison to the shiplet design. Therefore, the new Renoir only has 8 megabytes of L3 cache, down from 32 megabytes for the company's 8th core uh, Ryzen 3000 series processor on desktop, which is a huge difference. And this obviously begs the question how does this impact the gaming? performance. It's gonna be very interesting to see how these new CPUs perform. Now what is your thoughts on the new design? Please let me know in the comments below. Worth noting is also the fact that Renault R does not support PCIe Express 4.0. Maybe they, they simply couldn't make it to work with a new core design or something. And as of making this video, AMD hasn't given us a reason uh, why this is. So we're gonna have to wait and see uh, what the reason is behind it. So I wouldn't call lack of PCIe Express 4.0 a deal breaker but it's something obviously to have in mind. Now anyway AMD Renault enters two different segments of the mobile market. We got the ultra thin segment and we got the performance segment. Let's start with ultra thin. So the new top model here is the Ryzen 7 4800U which takes 8 core and 16 threads to just 15 watt TDP. This one has a base frequency of 1.8 gigahertz and a maximum turbo of 4.8. And this is very impressive considering a 15 watt TDP. On the graphics side, the model gets an 8 a compute unit of 512 Steam processors operating at 1750 megahertz. In addition to that, AMD has another 4 U series processor models in the making, with the entry model starting at 4 cores. All have a TDP value of 15 watts, which can be configured either up to 25 watts or down to 12 watts by OAM manufacturers. Factors, and this gives uh, flexibility to prioritize either a higher performing machine or a more a slim variant where cooling uh, won't be as uh, you know as necessary. But yeah, what's more exciting is the H series, which climbs up to a significantly higher 45 watt TDP. And AMD said that the purpose of the H series is mainly you know portable gaming computers, but also other computers where high performance on the go is a priority. The 
top model here is the Ryzen 7 4800H. This one's got an 8 core processor with 16 threads with a max turbo frequency of 4.2 gigahertz and a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz. On top of that, there is also Ryzen 7 4800HS where the specifications are completely identical to the Ryzen 7 4800H with the exception of a TDP value that goes down to 35 watts. This turns out to be a specific special variant exclusive to uh, Asus for a time period of 6 months and Asus did actually show off their upcoming Asus uh, Sephiroth G14 which is a gaming laptop releasing this February where the 4800HS will be used. And according to AMD and Asus, despite its lower TDP value, the Ryzen 7 4800HS should deliver identical performance as the Ryzen 7 4800H. What makes the HS model special is that it's been carefully handpicked, uh, basically better silicon that can run with the same clock frequencies at a lower voltage. And so this means that these processors will have better power efficiency. Now in terms of performance, this is where it gets interesting. AMD compares uh, you know the top flagship the 4800H which got 8 cores and 16 threads to Intel's Core i7 5750H which has 6 cores and 12 threads. Now the reason why AMD compares a 6 core versus an 8 core, the reason for this is that they are priced you know the same but despite that they also say that the 8 core 16 thread model outperform Intel's 8 core i9 9880H in most scenarios which is obviously very impressive. The 8 series processor also comes with a brand new feature called a smart shift which is an algorithm that dynamically prioritizes either the processor or the graphics card in the computer's total uh, power budget to provide maximum performance. According to AMD, Smart Shift will offer at least 10% higher performance compared to having the function turned off. They actually showed us a, uh, a screenshot running Division 2 benchmark where Smart Shift enabled gave the system, I believe it was 7 or perhaps 8 more frames on average. So basically more FPS and power for basically just activating feature and so very very exciting stuff. Now in conclusion AMD talks about doubling energy efficiency with the new series compared to the previous generation for laptops. Now noteworthy here is that AMD haven't said anything about you know battery life which has been AMD's biggest flaw on mobile in comparison to Intel's processors that is still on top of the hill when it comes to power draw and power efficiency. Now in terms of release date Ryzen 4000 on mobile is releasing right now and we should start seeing laptops uh, coming out very shortly. I'm very excited to review some of these laptops for you guys, hopefully giving you some numbers and you know answer the question whether you know the fourth gen Ryzen is worth it or not. Unfortunately, AMD did not talk anything about the desktop this time, and I guess we gotta have to wait a bit longer for that. Rumors have it that AMD is planning on releasing you know the fourth gen Ryzen for desktop around. August or September and I gotta say I am also a bit disappointed in AMD still not a single word on Big Navi or the RX 5900 and the time is unfortunately ticking I believe that we need the 5900 XT right now we cannot wait any longer anyway I love to hear your thoughts guys watch either of these two videos for more content and I will see you over there thank you so much for watching this video